This episode is part of an ongoing series on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. You'll find links in the description below to every single episode in this series. In the previous episode, we covered the spread of nationalism in Europe in the 19th century, which led Jews in Europe to believe they were a nation and had the right to self-determination in Palestine, at more or less the same time that Arabs in Palestine believed that they were also a nation. In this episode, we're going to try to understand how that led to conflict. The first deadly instance of violence between European Jewish settlers and Palestinian Arabs was in 1886 in Petah Tikva when Jews bought land, showed up, and initially just continued to employ the Arabs that had already been living there. And that must have been a little bit awkward at first when the Zionists showed up like, Salamu Alaikum guys, what's up? Um, uh, this is land here is the Yitzt Mines, okay ciao, <laughs> Salamu Alaikum. But then in 1883, a new group of Jews arrived from Bielostok and they demanded that the Arab tenant farmers vacate. This angered the Arab peasant farmers. They had already completed the first part of a two year crop cycle and wanted to plant the next phase, the valuable winter crop. Yeah, this angered Arab peasant farmers because of the winter crop and also because they were about to get kicked out of their homes. You know, details. Now, the exact order of events is disputed, but Arabs stole a horse from the Zionists, the Zionists stole a bunch of donkeys from the Arabs, then Arabs tried to get them back and realizing they were gone, attacked the Zionists, injuring five and killing one. A similar incident occurred in 1895 when European Jews bought land, this time in the Galilee and they removed the Arabs who had been living there. And one of the guys who got removed found a Zionist and murdered him in his sleep. Now there's a burning question with the story, which is why would Arabs sell their land to Zionists only to become tenants to the Zionists they just sold it to? The greater part of them were Falachin, peasant farmers living off the land. They were the tenants of wealthy landowners who lived in the towns, Nablus or Jerusalem. Or if they were from the north, perhaps Beirut. Many of these Palestinian Arab farmers don't own the land that they're living on and that they're cultivating. The land's owned by these Arabs living in cities like Jaffa in the case of the Petah Tikva land or Saidan in the case of the Galilee land. And so the question is why is all this farmland owned by Arabs in the cities? And to answer that question we need to talk about the history of Ottoman land law and we're not going to do that but the peasants got screwed over. Of course the peasants got screwed over. Because if they didn't get screwed over, we'd be calling them farmers. And these kinds of episodes become more and more common over the next few decades. Jews are facing pogroms in Europe in 1881, 1903 to 1906, after World War I. So they're moving to Palestine and they're displacing Arabs and then some of them get killed in their sleep. In part, that's because Zionist settlers increasingly came to believe that hiring Arabs, employing Arabs, was contrary to the goals of the Zionist movement, which was to build a Jewish homeland. What are you doing hiring Arabs? Hire Jews! This is all about the Jews! We're trying to build a Jewish homeland! I mean, that was the logic, and that created a lot of resentment. And I know you might be thinking that refusing to hire someone because of their ethnicity may sound a bit racist, by modern standards, and that's because it is. But I don't think it should come as any surprise to anybody that an ideology that first developed in the 1880s isn't going to age that well. And Zionists at the time would have responded by saying, well, we're not hiring Arabs because we don't want to be the owners and the capitalists of all the Arabs and they're just our workers and that's going to create class resentment on the part of the Arabs against us, the capitalist owners, so we're just not going to hire the Arabs at all. And I suppose, yeah, maybe it's better to be a racist than a capitalist and Zionists are going to be angry when they hear that and they're going to say, but we were being persecuted in Europe and you were and that's why some of you moved to Palestine. And that's why one of you got murdered in your sleep. And I know a lot of people might be wondering who's to blame here. Is it the European governments for treating Jews like crap for so many centuries? Is it European citizens for committing these pogroms against European Jews? 
Is it the Arab urban landowners who are selling all this land to Zionists knowing full well that the, the farmers, the Palestinian Arab peasant farmers are all gonna get displaced? Or is it maybe the Ottoman government for the unfair land laws that we didn't even talk about? Or maybe it's the Zionist settlers for their racist employment policies? Or is it the Arabs themselves for committing violence in retaliation? So the point I'm trying to make in this video is that if you want to understand the origins of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, rather than just blaming the side you disagree with, try to instead understand why each side behaved the way it did except the Ottoman side, which I didn't talk about because who really cares about Ottoman land law? I'm, I'm sorry to all my Ottoman friends out there. And this sets the stage for the next episode, which is gonna be all about what happened during World War I and why that led to a cosmic shift in the trajectory of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Until next time, like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.